Hello and welcome back to this new edition of News Today. Without delay, let's explore the headlines first. Indian Space Research Organisation completes its reusable launch vehicle technology demonstrations. Kerala celebrates Kodi Kol recognition as India's first UNESCO city of literature. Prime Minister of Bangladesh paid a state visit to India. Allocation for bidding of green ammonia under site program enhanced. International Seabed Authority marks its 30th anniversary. US India Indus X initiative marks one year anniversary. In our very first news, the Indian Space Research Organisation has successfully completed its reusable launch vehicle technology demonstrations. This milestone marks ISRO's third consecutive success in the final test of the RLV landing experiment following the triumphs of the RLV LX01 and LX02 missions. Let's delve into the details of this groundbreaking project. The RLV LEX is part of the RLV technology demonstration program, which is designed to develop essential technologies for a fully reusable launch vehicle aiming to provide low cost access to space. The program has seen a series of technology demonstration missions, including the HEX 01 mission in 2016, three LEX missions, and the planned RLV orbital re entry experiment. Now, focusing on the latest accomplishment, the RLV LEX 03 mission. This mission simulated high-speed landing conditions for a vehicle returning from space. A winged vehicle aptly named Pushpak autonomously approached the runway and performed a precise horizontal landing. Unlike SpaceX Falcon 9, which lands vertically, Pushpak's wing enabled it to glide horizontally, showcasing a different approach to reusable launch vehicle technology. Moving on to the vehicle behind this success, ISRO's RLV Technology Demonstrator. Configured as a flying test bed, the RLV TD is designed to evaluate various technologies, including hypersonic flight, autonomous landing, and powered cruise flight. The vehicle comprises a fuselage, a nose cap, double delta wings, and twin vertical tails, giving it an aircraft-like appearance. The ultimate goal is to scale up the RLV TD to serve as the first stage of India's reusable two-stage orbital launch vehicle. Reflecting on previous experiments, the RLV TD program has already achieved significant milestones. The RLV TD HEX01 mission in 2016 validated critical technologies such as autonomous navigation, guidance and control, a reusable thermal protection system, and re entry mission management. During the RLV LEX01 mission in 2023 and the subsequent LEX02 mission in March 2024, ISRO successfully validated domestically developed technologies in navigation, control systems, landing and gear, and deceleration systems. These advancements are crucial for achieving autonomous high speed landings of space returning vehicles. In conclusion, ISRO's successful completion of the RLV technology demonstrates a significant step forward in the quest for affordable and reusable space exploration. Moving ahead, we bring you the exciting news from Kerala, where celebrations are in full swing as Kodi Kod has been recognized as India's first UNESCO City of Literature. This prestigious title was announced by UNESCO in October 2023, placing Kodi Kod under the literary category of the UNESCO Creative Cities Network. Kerala has also announced that June 23rd will be celebrated annually as City of Literature in Kodiko. Kodiko or Calicut, located on the picturesque Malabar coast, has a legacy that stretches back centuries. The term Calico for a fine handwoven cloth is believed to be derived from Calicut. In medieval times, it was ruled by the Samothiris or Zamorans and gained fame as a city of spices. For over 500 years, it was a bustling hub of trade dealing in spices like black pepper and cardamom with traders from around the world. The city attracted notable visitors throughout history. In the 14th century, the famous traveller Ibn Battuta walked its streets. A century later, it welcomed the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama and Persian ambassador Abdul Razak. Today, Kodikor stands as a beacon of literature and learning. It boasts over 500 libraries and more than 70 publishers alongside a high level of literary education. The Stopus Literary Foundation undoubtedly contributed to its UNESCO recognition. In 2012, it earned the title City of Sculptures or Shilp Nagaram because of the various architectural sculptures. Kodikor's inclusion in the UNESCO Creative Cities Network is a matter of national pride. The network, established in 2004, aims to promote cooperation among cities that have identified creativity as a key factor for sustainable urban development. It covers seven creative fields that are crafts and folk art, design, film, gastronomy, literature, media arts and music. It now encompasses 350 cities worldwide. Additionally, the UCC and TAG gives it global recognition and boosts tourism. 
Other Indian cities on UCCN are Gwalior, Chennai and Varanasi for music, Mumbai for film, Hyderabad for gastronomy, and Jaipur and Srinagar for crafts and folk art. In conclusion, as Kodi Kor celebrates this honor, it stands as a testament to India's rich literary heritage and its continuing contribution to global culture. Next, we bring you significant news on the state visit of the Prime Minister of Bangladesh to India. During this pivotal visit, both nations signed a series of memorandums of understanding aimed at fostering cooperation in the digital, green and blue economy and even a small satellite project. Let's explore the importance of Bangladesh for India. Geographically, Bangladesh shares the longest land border with India, making it a critical partner in preventing cross-border terrorism, human trafficking and illicit trade. Moreover, Bangladesh provides India's northeastern states with easier access to the rest of the country and the Indian Ocean. A prime example of this is the Akhara Agartala cross border rail link, which enhances connectivity. Moving on to regional integration, Bangladesh is key for inter regional connectivity between South Asia and Southeast Asia. Initiatives like the Trans Asian Railway and the BBIN Motor Vehicle Agreement highlight this. Bangladesh is also willing to join the ongoing India Myanmar Thailand trilateral project. Notably, Nepal is exporting electricity to Bangladesh through India's grid, marking a first in sub regional cooperation in the energy sector. India's vision for regional leadership also sees Bangladesh as central. It is a cornerstone of India's neighborhood first policy, Act East policy, Vision Sagar, and Indo Pacific vision. Strengthening ties with Bangladesh helps India maintain its influence in the Bay of Bengal amid China's growing assertiveness. Talking about economic significance, Bangladesh is India's biggest trade partner in South Asia, and India ranks as the second biggest trade partner for Bangladesh in Asia. In the fiscal year 2022 23, the total bilateral trade between two nations amounted to an impressive $15.9 billion. Additionally, Bangladesh is India's largest development partner, benefiting from substantial lines of credit support extended by India. Recently, trade in Indian rupee has also commenced between the two countries, marking a significant milestone. In conclusion, the state visit of the Prime Minister of Bangladesh to India underscores the deepening ties and multifaceted cooperation between the two nations. In our next news, in a significant move to boost green energy initiatives, the Indian government has announced an increase in the allocation for bidding for green ammonia under the site program. The capacity available for bidding under mode 2A of site program has been raised from 550,000 metric tons per annum to 750,000 tons per annum. Mode 2A of the site program, that is, incentive for procurement of green ammonia production, offers selected bidders financial incentives for three years for the production and supply of green ammonia. Strategic Interventions for Green Hydrogen Transition or SITE program is part of National Green Hydrogen Mission. Allocation was enhanced in response to the increase in demand of green ammonia from the fertilizer sector. For those unfamiliar with the concept, green ammonia is produced using renewable energy sources and derives its hydrogen from water and its nitrogen from air. To that end, conventional ammonia is produced using fossil fuels like natural gas for hydrogen and energy. Hence, it is termed as brown ammonia. The importance of green ammonia cannot be overstated. Traditional ammonia production emits approximately 2 tons of carbon dioxide per ton of ammonia. By transitioning to green ammonia, we can drastically reduce greenhouse gas emissions while also creating a sustainable fuel source. Green ammonia has multiple applications beyond fertilizers. It can be used for producing hydrogen, a clean fuel, and enables efficient hydrogen transport and storage. Moreover, it can be used in energy transition. It can be used as a fuel in boilers, turbines, or engines for heat and electricity generation. Green hydrogen also boasts a high energy density compared to other chemicals produced by renewable processes. However, the transition to green ammonia is not without challenges. It requires new infrastructure, innovation, and substantial investment, making it currently more expensive than conventional methods. Wrapping up, let's also take into account some facts about ammonia. It is produced using the Haber-Bosch process where hydrogen and nitrogen are combined. Around 70% of ammonia is used for fertilizers. The rest is used for industrial applications, including plastics, explosive, and synthetic fibers. China is the largest producer of ammonia, accounting for 30% of production, followed by US, the European Union, India, Russia, and the Middle East. In conclusion, 
As the country continues to innovate in sustainable industrial processes, it sets an example for balancing economic growth with environmental responsibility. In other news, the International Seabed Authority marks a significant milestone in global maritime governance as it celebrates its 30th anniversary. Established upon the entry into force of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea in 1994, the ISA stands as a unique international organization dedicated to managing global commons for the benefit of humanity with a focus on equitable resource allocation. Let's dive deeper into the role and significance of the ISA. An autonomous international organization mandated by UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, the ISA is responsible for managing mineral resources of the seabed beyond national jurisdictions, covering around 54% of the world's oceans. Its mandate includes regulating exploration and exploitation of deep sea minerals, protecting the marine environment from harmful effects of the deep seabed related activities, and encouraging marine scientific research. Headquartered in Kingston, Jamaica, the ISA boasts 168 member states, including India, along with the European Union. Membership is automatic upon ratification of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. Now, let's look at some of the major initiatives undertaken by the ISA. The Marine Scientific Research Action Plan supports the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. Additionally, the Sustainable Seabed Knowledge Initiative aims to describe over 1,000 new deep sea species. The ISA is also developing regional environmental management plans for Mid-Atlantic Ridge, Indian Ocean and Northwest Pacific Ocean, following the success of the first REMP for clarion Clipperton Zone. Shifting focus to India's involvement with the ISA, India is one of the 38 countries that maintain permanent missions to the organization. Recently, India submitted two applications for seabed exploration in the Indian Ocean, one for polymetallic sulfides in the Carlsberg Ridge and the other for cobalt-rich ferromanganese crust of the Afanasi Nikitin Sea Mount. Currently, India holds two contracts for exploration, polymetallic nodules in the central Indian Ocean Basin and polymetallic sulfides in the Indian Ocean Ridge. In conclusion, the 30th anniversary of the International Seabed Authority marks three decades of significant contributions to global maritime governance, resource management and scientific research. Moving ahead, today marks the one-year anniversary of the India-US Defence Acceleration Ecosystem known as Indus-X. Launched in June 2023, this initiative aims to build a defence innovation bridge between the two nations under the Broader Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technologies, or ICET. IndusX has been instrumental in facilitating partnerships among US and Indian defense companies, incubators, accelerators, investors, and universities. One of the key accomplishments has been the establishment of commercial collaborations between defense companies of two countries in various domains, including intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, as well as semiconductors. The initiative has also explored modalities for joint innovation funding between the two nations. A notable development is Indus X Gurukul, a hybrid information series designed for US and Indian defense startups. Indus X has also made strides in industry academia linkages, facilitating the exchange of best practices on technology transfer and licensing, and advancing research in emerging defense technology domains. This initiative builds upon a strong foundation of India-US defense technology cooperation. In 2016, the US designated India as a major defense partner, paving the way for deeper collaboration. Since then, several key defense agreements have been signed, including the Logistics Exchange Memorandum of Agreement in 2016, the Communications Compatibility and Security Agreement in 2018, the Industrial Security Agreement in 2019, and the Basic Exchange and Cooperation Agreement in 2020. The ICET also serves as an overarching umbrella framework for technology cooperation covering both commercial and defense technologies. Additionally, the US-India Roadmap for Defense Industrial Cooperation aims to fast-track technology cooperation and co-production in areas of mutual interest. The significance of these strengthening India-US defense ties cannot be overstated. They align with the strategic objectives of both countries for a free, open and rules-based Indo-Pacific region. This partnership is fostering defense industrial development along with the advancement of cutting-edge technologies and capabilities. Moreover, this collaboration is crucial in addressing strategic challenges arising from the emergence of China, a concern shared by both nations. It's also paving the way for the development of new defense domains such as Space Force, AI use in defense and maritime domain awareness. 
In conclusion, as Indus X enters its second year, it continues to symbolize the growing strategic partnership between India and the US, promising further advancement in defense technology and cooperation. In our next segment, let's discuss the personality in news. On the birth anniversary of Sant Kabir Das, a 15th century mystic poet whose words still echo across centuries, the nation's leader paid homage to a man who defied religious boundaries and spoke truth to power. Sant Kabir Das is believed to be born a Hindu but was raised by a poor Muslim weaver family. He was likely initiated into the Bhakti movement by a guru, possibly Ramanand. He advocated Nirguna path, which believes God to be formless. His verses are compiled in three traditions, Bijak or Kabir Panth, Granthavali or Dadu Panth, and many other compositions are in the Adi Granth Sahib. He spoke Sant Bhasha or the language of Nirguna poets and Ulad Basi or upside down sayings. He opposed idol worship and preached ideas of the unity of God and equality of all human beings. As we conclude today's main news, let's have a look at some quick updates. Russia approves the draft reciprocal exchange of logistics agreement with India. Reciprocal exchange of logistics agreement would enable the militaries of both countries to access logistics and support facilities at each other's bases and ports. Ministry of Home Affairs inaugurated the Fast Track Immigration Trusted Traveller program at Indira Gandhi International Airport, New Delhi. This facility will be launched at 21 major airports in the country. Recently, the 53rd GST Council meeting was concluded. GST Council established as a constitutional body under Article 279A of the Constitution through 101 Constitutional Amendment Act of 2016. It is constituted by President and its chairperson is the Union Finance Minister. Ambubachi Mela at Kamakya Temple in Assam has started. The festival, festival commemorates, commemorates the yearly menstruation, menstruation of Goddess Kamakya. Kamakya Temple is located on the Nilachal Hills. It was reconstructed in the mid-16th century by the Koch dynasty. Several scholars have been working to restore prominence of Shrikakulam's forgotten heritage located in Andhra Pradesh. Shrikakulam's former name was Chikakol, used by the British colonial regime. It was once part of the Kalinga dynasty. The Enforcement Directorate contested a bail order arguing that it didn't properly apply the twin test required under Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. Section 45 of PMLA, which deals with bail, states that where the public prosecutor opposes the bill application, a twin test must be applied by the court. A first-of-its-kind skin bank has been opened by the Army Hospital in New Delhi. Skin bank has as its main functions the harvesting, processing, preservation and supply of fine human skin allografts for burn treatment centers and polytrauma. Cloudburst triggers landslides and flood-like situations in Itanagar, Arunachal Pradesh. A cloudburst is an intense, localized rainfall event. According to India Meteorological Department, rainfall over 100 mm per hour occurring in a small geographical area is referred to as cloudburst. Before we wrap up today's bulletin, it's time to put your knowledge to test in today's segment of Test Your Learning. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this edition of News Today. For the solutions to today's quiz and to access the PDF version of News Today, remember to visit the provided links in the description below.